So morning, it's Dave. It's uh, June 5th, day after uh, my brother Patrick's birthday. Happy birthday, Patrick. Hope you had a good one. Um, so out here at the property, gonna try to finish the two little border fences I'm putting up for the um, for the shooting range. And so uh, it's a horizontal picket fence, which is basically Instead of running your pickets up and down like you see on most fences, this one's going to run them horizontally. So you can see that, uh, you know, put a couple posts in, you put two posts, and then you run your rails see, up in between. I got, um, you know, two posts um, and then two posts. Let's see that. And then I run these rails up in between. And when I was out here last time, I was stacking them up. And I try to, you know, cheat a little bit and go up pretty high before I put a binder in to hold the, you know, to hold the two pieces, the two posts together. Otherwise, you get too much force pushing out. Well, it, I started getting too much force and started pushing them out. And so I set them and tamped them back down the posts into the clay. And they're fairly hard. And I'm going to put a couple, um, uh, little boards across at the where the zip ties are and uh, that'll hold it steady I'll probably put um, you know a layer of logs up and then repeat that and then probably one more time and then repeat it at the top so that's the kind of process I'm going through so anyways that's that's where we're at and um, and so hopefully we can get this done and then get the next one run back here so uh, anyway that's Dave out all right, so what I'm doing here, which you good to see, I got a little piece of log that I use, and so I flatten it, and then I put a screw in it so it'll hold it, give this some stability um, left and right. You see, it won't go left or right. It will go back and forth. Um, but the whole purpose is to keep it from spreading. So put one in here. And I'm gonna get ready to put one in over here, and then we'll go up a few logs, um, I don't know how high, uh, and then uh, repeat it, and uh, hopefully I'll give it the stability. And you know, I shouldn't have shortcut it the first time I did it. I was hoping I could get by, and uh, just putting one at the top. I didn't think the logs would put uh, that much pressure pushing out, but they sure did. So, anyways, uh, you know, you learn from your uh, mistakes. So off I go. Yeah, I don't know. You have never flatten the side, so. You can see, see how that side's flattened there. It just helps it bond a little bit or snug up a little tighter to the log as I put it in. So let's take a quick look at how I do that. I'm no means an expert and, uh, you know, safety glasses. I got safety shoes, handling the hatchet. So I will, I'm doing this barehanded. Sometimes I use gloves, all depends. But anyways, here you go. So you notice it's sitting on a stump. Hopefully you get a good view of it. But you just find a point. You know, if you want flat, get a good... So you've got a curl started. And just try to follow it all the way down. It's okay if it chips off. See, look at how rough that wood is. It's be pretty hard to get a curl all the way down on this. That's all right. Just keep following it down. And look at that. Nice sharp axe or hatchet. But you end up with a flat edge. So flip it over, do the same thing. Start my point, just follow my curl all the way down. There we go. Thing of beauty.
back to that's one side done one fence done so i trip over my 22 target anyways take a look at it and we'll come back here see what she looks like and now you maybe you can see what i'm trying to do here so you got this side with the fence that kind of marks it and you got the woods on this side so i don't really need a fence there but i also want something that goes across the back for no other reason than when you're shooting all that change in scenery sometimes makes it hard to focus so um so anyways we're gonna run run across the back just like this one and uh i'll show you what it looks like when we get done all right dave out all right so hey that's what it looks like but i think i'm gonna go up one more one more round round it's not high enough so those targets are sitting at about 46, 47 inches, which is, yeah, it's mid chest, or for me, upper chest, but for the average guy, probably mid chest, four foot, you know? And so I don't know if I want to make those much shorter. And I'm like, so right here where we were, so that's like 10 yards. So it seems like that's a decent, decent target and good to shoot at, but I got to go up higher on the fence to, see all that stuff back there above the fence to kind of block that out a little bit more so I think the very back part and I got plenty of wood to do it I think I'll go up one more rung and then that'll be it for the back one I think the side I'll probably go up one more as well and then uh, trim everything off so getting pretty close long day for me had a fan there that helped a little bit. It was really hot. It's the upper 80s. Sweating like crazy. So, uh, hey, if you ever want to know what's one key to be able to work out in the heat, does that mean I dug those holes, laid all those, put all the bracing in, did all that today? And I'm like, I'm a 56 year old man who's got a little bit of a belly. The reason, part of the reason I can do that is. So I didn't, I kind of can try to condition myself to get ready to be outside in the heat. In addition to drinking a lot, so I don't drink a lot at one time. I drink a lot of little bits. And then the other thing I do though is uh, on the way here, I don't run the air conditioner. I drive with the window open. Um, I try to um, spend more time outside at home and prep for that. And so it's the same thing as you do for cold weather. When you're gonna go sit out in cold weather, you got to spend some time in cool weather preparing your body and then it's more applicable to it your body accommodates more to it and so i do the same for the heat now that just works for me i don't know if there's any science to it or if that's just um how it is but i don't know if it's really supposed to be that way but it does work for me and it has my whole life so. there it's dave so it's uh out here at the property, June 11th, going to do some uh, variety of things. I'm going to finish that uh, horizontal picket fence, put that other level up. So I got a, I'm a chainsaw, hatchet, axe, and handsaw. I'll be using those. Finish that up, and I got some weed eating to do. I want to weed eat the, uh, get the all the uh, weeds down and grass down out of the um, rifle range and get that all set up so I can uh, I want to build the um, shooting bench and I want to get that done next after I finish up today that'll be the next project and get that situated out here tested because um, I bought a uh, peep site a uh, cloverleaf peep site for my uh, Marlin 3030 which um, I'm pretty excited about I've always um, I wanted wanted something other than the buckhorn because when you get older it's hard to for me it's harder to focus on that um maybe younger when i was younger i didn't have a problem with buckhorn sights but uh peep sights going to help with that i didn't want to put a scope on it i wanted to keep it a little bit more traditional the 30 30 and it'll work good out here hunting deer so i'm pretty excited about that so i want to get it sighted in so i need a shooting bench so i want to get that done Is it, when you get older it's like it's hard. Yeah. at the Tops all trimmed, trimmed the side along. Yeah, 
well, I guess the left side, trim that left side off. So it's, and then the tops of the posts, put a slant on it so the rain would run off a little bit. Yeah, I know the, it's not like a forever kind of thing, but it'll definitely get the job done what I need. And it's very um, easy to maintain. Uh, as wood or pieces rot out, you just replace those um, as things settle. Like I have some settling going on right there. You can see the gap opening up, log settle. I can slam some logs in there. I'll slam, fit some in there and uh, help it. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. And you can see now the targets, no matter how I do it, I gotta go background. So it'd be easier to shoot. So I'm happy about that. It gives the shooting range some definition. Stand back here, take a look at it. Yeah. So. All the way back here at the, you know, where the shed's gonna be, the hunting shed. It really does define it. I mean, uh, obviously that's your pistol range, right? And so that's what I wanted. I didn't, I didn't want people to be confused. And uh, I had a large natural burn behind it, but there's a big gap. And so I'm gonna fill that gap in between the horizontal fence I made and the berm. So over time, that'll get filled in, which I think will be good. So uh, anyway, there you go. Getting ready to head out of here. Been a long day. Doesn't seem like I got a whole lot done, but not a bit done. All right, Dave out. Actually, I didn't turn around at all. The camera did. Um, I got a new iPhone. The SE, it's the, uh, I would say the poor man's new iPhone. But it's a lot cheaper um, than the 11 or the X. Um, doesn't have as fancy a camera, but it has a good enough camera, I think. I think the quality is pretty good. So, um, anyways, uh, I just want to remind everybody to... Uh, be kind to each other. You know, if you're kind to each other, you're never going to have problems. Some people will reject your kindness. Some will make fun of you for it. You just have to endure that. But at the end of the day, you're not going to have any issues if you're kind to people. And so you got to swallow your pride, which is hard to do. I get frustrated just like anybody else. You know, driving traffic, somebody cuts you off. You get frustrated and you want to go cut them off, but you don't because that's wrong. And so that's the kind of stuff I'm some of it, but it goes beyond that, you know, helping somebody out, doing something good for somebody. So anyways, just remember, be kind. All right. Hope you have a good one. Dave out.